Joining the cast of Saturday Night Live or hosting the show is a dream gig for plenty of celebrities. But certain stars have actually passed on this major opportunity. From hilarious comedians to big-time movie stars, here are some celebs who refused a gig on SNL. Over the past few decades, Amy Sedaris has proven herself to be one of the funniest and most unique people working in showbiz. She co-created and starred on the Comedy Central cult classic Strangers with Candy, and since 2017, she's been the star of At Home with Amy Sedaris, a darkly comic parody of home improvement shows that's based on her best-selling humor books. And then there are her other unforgettable gigs in the likes of Elf, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, and BoJack Horseman. But one major comedy area where Sedaris has been conspicuously absent is Saturday Night Live. In 1995, a frustrated Janine Garofalo left SNL in the middle of her one and only season on the show. Producer Lorne Michaels then sought to replace her with another young and edgy comedian, so he summoned Sedaris. As she later revealed in an interview, I met with Lorne Michaels, but at the time we were doing our play One Woman Shoe and it was everything I wanted. One Woman Shoe was a comic stage piece that she wrote with her brother David Sedaris. She also noted, maybe even three years earlier it would have been great, but at that point it was like, oh, it's too late. In the late 90s, struggling actor Johnny Knoxville pitched an article to skateboarding magazine Big Brother, in which he would try out painful self-defense equipment on himself. Editor Jeff Tremaine approved it and had Knoxville film the experience of being assaulted with pepper spray and a stun gun, and then he included it in a Big Brother-branded video. Around the same time, skateboarder Bam Margera released videos of himself and his friends doing wild pranks and stunts. Tremaine connected that group with Knoxville and other like-minded Big Brother contributors. That collective self-produced a pilot in which they did ill-advised activities on camera and pitched it to several outlets, including Saturday Night Live, which offered Knoxville and company a weekly spot. But they ended up passing on that opportunity and instead aired their show on MTV, where it became famous as Jackass. Knoxville also passed on the chance to be an SNL cast member. As he explained to the Washington Times in 2005, it was at the point where I either say yes to my friends, where we had all the control, or yes to Saturday Night Live, where none of my friends were really going to be there and I had no control. Jennifer Aniston actually did star on a Saturday night sketch comedy show, The Edge, which aired for one season on Fox. But she almost got the chance to be on Saturday Night Live around the same time, as her Just Go With It co-star Adam Sandler revealed on The Oprah Winfrey Show in 2011. We wanted Aniston to be on the show with us. At the time that Sandler was a cast member in the early 90s, Aniston came into the show's office for a meeting with Lorne Michaels. Sandler was excited by the possibility of Aniston joining the cast, but she ultimately turned down the offer. As she explained during a 2019 appearance on The Howard Stern Show, I didn't think I would like that environment. I was such a young twit. I was like, I think the women need to be treated better here, because it was such a boys club. You're just not the brightest when you're in your early 20s. You lectured Lauren. I didn't and lecture. I was just saying what I would hope if I was to do this, what I would, what I would hope it to be. Around this same time, Aniston was gearing up to be in the cast of a different NBC show, a little sitcom that you might have heard of called Friends. Before Bonnie Hunt was a go-to Pixar voice actor, or the host of a daytime talk show, or the star of her own sitcom, she was a comic actor honing her skills in Chicago's thriving theater scene. She became one of the most popular performers in the Second City troupe, which has long been a stepping stone to SNL. So when representatives from the Late Night Show came to Illinois looking for new talent in the late 80s, the spotlight shined on Hunt. Her gifts and skills for improvisational comedy got her noticed by Lorne Michaels. But her love of being funny on the fly is what prompted her to turn down the offer to join SNL. As she told the Los Angeles Times in 2008, I asked, if there's an end of a scene that doesn't feel like it's working, can you improvise? And he said, absolutely not. Hunt also wasn't impressed with the show's track record with gender at the time. As she put it, it didn't seem like women's careers were really launched on that show. In the mid-90s, Andy Dick ranked among comedy's cool kids. He was a cast member on the cult classic sketch comedy series The Ben Stiller Show. Alas, Fox canceled that show after airing only 13 episodes, as it was the least watched show on broadcast TV during the 1992 to 1993 season. Two years later, Dick resurfaced in another acclaimed series, this time playing office buffoon Matthew on the NBC workplace sitcom News Radio, opposite the likes of Phil Hartman and Dave Foley. But Dick might not have ever ended up on News Radio if he'd taken another job that was was on the table, SNL cast member. As he told Laugh Spin, I said no 
know because I had just come off the Ben Stiller show, but the truth of the matter is, I was afraid I would not be able to do a few characters every week. I didn't have the confidence that I do now. Dick also had some apprehension about performing live. As he explained, For the Ben Stiller show, we shot every single scene like a short film, so if I felt we needed to, we can just start again. You can't do that on Saturday Night Live. At the same time that Saturday Night Live was emerging as a force for hard-hitting comedy in America, Second City Television, or SCTV for short, was blowing up in Canada. And just like how the early years of SNL helped launch the careers of multiple comedy legends, SCTV made stars out of such cast members as John Candy, Rick Moranis, Eugene Levy, and his future Schitt's Creek co-star, Catherine O'Hara. SCTV went on hiatus for most of 1979 and 1980, during which time O'Hara joined the cast of SNL, but she never actually made it onto the air during this time, as she quit after about a week and a half. As she recalled to the Toronto Star and 2007, I hung out with some nice people, tried to come up with some ideas, but I never really felt involved. Then O'Hara received word that SCTV was set to go back into production, so she told SNL Brass that she had to go back. As she recalled, I said I'd made a huge mistake. I'm not proud of that. I felt stupid doing it, but I had to come home. While O'Hara never appeared on TV during her stint on SNL, she did eventually host the show a couple of times in the early 90s. Throughout the first decade of the 2000s, Orlando Bloom was just about the hottest actor in Hollywood. He played a majorly crushable heartthrob in two billion-dollar franchises, The Lord of the Rings and Pirates of the Caribbean. So naturally enough, Saturday Night Live producers tried to get in on the Orlando Bloom action. He was offered a chance to host the show at the peak of his fame, but he said no. As he later revealed on The Howard Stern Show in 2019, I was really insecure at the time. I was just like, partly my dyslexia? Partly like that window of time where I couldn't even think straight and see the wood through the trees. Bloom's dyslexia would have potentially been an issue because SNL is produced in such a quick turnaround that cast members and hosts can't memorize all their lines and instead have to rely on cue cards. But if Bloom were to get the call to host SNL now, he would take it, quote, in a heartbeat. As a writer and performer on such shows as The Office and The Mindy Project, it's hardly surprising that Mindy Kaling aspired to join the cast of Saturday Night Live, and she almost actually got there. During the second season of The Office, she was invited to audition for SNL, but it didn't work out because she was under contract at Dunder Mifflin. She told Office showrunner Greg Daniels that it was her dream job to be an SNL cast member, so he made a deal with her. If she was offered a position in the cast, then he would let her out of her contract. Kaling's audition went pretty well, but it ended up turning out a little differently than planned. Lorne Michaels offered her a spot on the writing staff, with a hint of a possibility that she could maybe move up to the cast one day. As she recalled to the Daily Beast's Last Laugh podcast in 2019, so I went back and talked to Greg about it, and he said to me, no, that's not the deal we made. The deal we made is that if you get cast as a cast member, you can go. And it was really a life-changing thing. I think the course of my career would have gone really differently had I left the office and done that instead. They offered me a writing job and Lauren was very nice and said she was very funny. Um, I completely understand, by the way, his decision, although, I, of course, it was not how I wanted the outcome to come. In 1970, the Beatles split up, and all four members went on to forge successful solo careers. Then, in 1976, concert promoter Sid Bernstein tried to get the band back together by offering them $230 million for a reunion tour. In March of that year, SNL attempted to get in on the action when Lorne Michaels appeared on camera to make a hilariously lackluster offer to get the Fab Four to reunite on his show. The National Broadcasting Company has authorized me to offer you a certified check for $3,000. What Michaels didn't know was that as he made his humorous pitch, Paul McCartney and John Lennon were actually hanging out together at the latter's New York City apartment and watching SNL. They heard the offer and almost took Michaels up on it. As McCartney recalled, John said, We should go down, just you and me. There's only two of us, so we'll take half the money. But it would have been work, and we were having a night off, so we elected not to go. Fellow Beatle George Harrison actually appeared on SNL the following season and attempted to cash in on the offer. I mean, I've come all this way. It was $3,000. That was a deal. I understand, but I mean, it was just one of those mix-ups. Lennon tragically died just four years later, while McCartney would go on to perform on SNL on multiple occasions. 
Ever since her back-to-back -back breakout performances in 1989's Steel Magnolias and 1990's Pretty Woman, Julia Roberts has ruled over the Hollywood A-list and enjoyed an unprecedented 30-year run as America's unofficial sweetheart. She's done almost everything an actor can do, including thrillers like Sleeping with the Enemy, fantasy flicks like Hook, inspirational fare like Aaron Brockovich, prestige TV like Homecoming, and of course, tons of romantic comedies. But there's one career milestone that has eluded Roberts, hosting an episode of Saturday Night Live. She's never actually confirmed whether or not she's been asked to appear on the show, although she has admitted that she isn't exactly inclined to take the gig. As she told EW Radio in 2017, I'm too scared. I mean, I would do it with Alec Baldwin if we could be comedy partners just doing skits. Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> Considering that Alec Baldwin is pretty much an honorary SNL cast member at this point, we imagine Roberts isn't the only one who would like to team up with him. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about your favorite stars are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.